Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the Rye Free Reading Room uh, Tales for Tots program. My name is Granny Jean, and I'm hoping the caregivers will stay and support the program, giving you the most opportunity and the most fun. Sure, sure, this is for everyone. It isn't just to watch, okay? So here we go, and drown me out, caregivers, absolutely. So here we go, are you, gonna, are you ready for our holo song, huh? The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Well, when I was a little girl, we didn't have any television and we didn't have any Zoom. So if we couldn't go visit people, we had to write letters, right? And pretty soon people will be writing letters anyway. They'll be making Valentines. What do you think? Huh? Some people will, sure. <clears throat> well, I wrote a letter to my friend. <clears throat> a tisket, a tasket, a green and yellow basket. I wrote a letter to my love, but on the way I dropped it. I dropped it, I dropped it. And on the way I dropped it, a little doggy picked it up <clears throat> and put it in his pocket. Well, goodness me, I wonder what he's going to do with that. What do you think? Huh? What do you think he's going to do with that letter? A tisket, a tasket, a green and yellow basket. I wrote a letter to my love, but on the way I dropped it. I dropped it, I dropped it. And on the way I dropped it, a little doggy picked it up and put it in his pocket. Do you think he might have mailed it? Maybe he did. Maybe he did. <clears throat> that would have been nice, right? Well, here's a surprise. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wrap myself in paper. I'm going to dab myself with glue. Stick some stamps upon my head. I'm going to mail myself to you. I'm going to tie me up in red string. I'm going to tie blue ribbons too. I'm going to climb up in my mailbox. I'm going to mail myself to you. When you see me in your mailbox, <clears throat> cut the string and take me out. Wash the glue from off my fingers. Stick some bubble gum in my mouth. Take me out of my wrapping paper. <laughs> Wash the stamps from off my head. Fill me up with ice cream soda. Tuck me in my nice warm bed. I'm going to wrap myself in paper. I'm going to dab myself with glue. Stick some stamps upon my head. I'm going to mail myself to you. Wouldn't that be silly? Huh? If you open up your mailbox and you found Granny Jean in it, oh, that's a silly song. That's why I like it. I think. Yeah. Well, Wizzy Wizard has a tip for all our caregivers each week, and it sort of helps understand how children learn, especially for those young young um, caregivers who don't quite uh, haven't have been with children too long, huh? When we talk about a story after we've read it, uh, we are helping them remember the story and what they've heard and to review it. And it helps them to reinforce the vocabulary that was new and uh, the words because they have the, the opportunity to use them again. So it does increase their vocabulary too. So by all means, talk about a story after you read it. <clears throat> Well, <clears throat> I see, I see footprints and I see an early sun here. It looks kind of warm. looks like something's happening out there in that snow. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And this story is the runaway giant. Now, what is that bear doing out in winter time? Doesn't, isn't he supposed to be sleeping? Mm -hmm. And the rabbit? Yeah, they usually are sleeping. I wonder what happened, huh? The Runaway Giant by Adelaide Hall. And look, there's a winter scene. Uh, some animals aren't sleeping, right? Some animals are. And I see a shadow down there by the gorse bush. 
I wonder what that's all about. Could it be the giant? <clears throat> One winter day, <clears throat> when the snow covered the ground like frosting on a birthday cake. Look at that. Frosting on a birthday cake. Brown Bear curled warm in his rocky cave, dreaming of sweet wild berries. There he is. Now he was sleeping all right. Rabbit <clears throat> huddled in his hollow log, dreaming of green grasses and clover. So there he is, sleeping a lot of the winter away. Nice, warm, snug, hollow log. Crow drowsed in a thornberry bush, thinking of ripe golden kernels of corn. And there he is, just sort of dreaming away. All at once, look at the squirrel. Does he look upset? Huh? What does he see? All at once from a high tree, there came a loud chattering. Oh, it was Squirrel calling down to the other animals. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Danger, danger, he screamed. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Danger. Bear poked his nose out of the rocky cave and sniffed the frosty air. Rabbit peered from behind the hollow log, his ears pointed and alert. Crow hopped down from the thornberry bush and the blue white, uh, <clears throat> on the blue white snow. Look at that. And there's Squirrel. What is it? What is it? What is it? They all asked in alarm. Squirrel was shaking and quaking. There's a giant in the valley. I saw it. I saw it from my high tree. A fearful, fearsome giant in the valley. As tall as the balsam tree. As wide as the snowberry bush. He wears a giant hat. And he carries a big thumping stick. Oh, he sounds dangerous, doesn't he? <clears throat> Bear, there's Bear, who was biggest and bravest, said, I will go down and see. So he did. He lumbered down the hill into the valley. The sun shone warm and bright. Bear made wide paw prints on the top of the crusty, crumbly snow. There he is. And there's the sun up there, starting to peek over the hills. He crouched behind a juniper bush. He looked and looked. Then he lumbered back up the hill to report to the others. The giant is not nearly so big as Squirrel told us, grumbled Bear. He is only half as tall as the balsam tree. And he is only half as wide as the snowberry bush. But he does wear a giant hat. And he does carry a large thumping stick. Rabbit, who had sharp ears and a swift leg, said, I will go and see for myself. So he did. There he goes. Off he goes. <clears throat> he went hurry scurry down the hill and into the valley. The sun shone warm and bright. Rabbit made deep little footprints in the soft, powdery snow. He crouched behind the juniper bush and stared and stared. Then he scurried back up to report to the others. Now look at that sun. It looks a little bit brighter, doesn't it? Hmm? Yeah, the sun's a little brighter up there. <clears throat> the giant is not nearly as big as Bear said. Uh, told us, said Rabbit Rabbit, all out of breath. He is only a fourth as tall as the balsam tree. And he's only a fourth as wide as the snowberry bush. 
but he does wear a giant hat and he does carry a big something stick or a giant one rather. <clears throat> well, what do you think they're doing there? My goodness. Crow, who was clever and crafty and wise said, oh, if he's no bigger than that, maybe we can scare him away. Let us all make fearful, fearsome noises. Ah, so they did. Bear growled and he yowled. Squirrel shrieked and screeched. Rabbit thumped and he thudded. Crow called out, caw, 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 in a frightening, frightful voice. The sound rang out over the hill and echoed back from the valley. Look at them, they're making a terrible racket that would scare away a giant. Oh, look how hot that sun looks. Hmm? <clears throat> After a while, Crow said, let us go down into the valley now. Let us see what we can see. So they did. Down, down the hill they went, making four little trails of step marks in the soft, wet snow. The sun shone very warm and very bright. <clears throat> What's happening to the snow? Not crunchy anymore, right? <clears throat> like bear, uh, bear bear's footprints? No, it's kind of mushy. <clears throat> uh, they all crouched behind the juniper bush. They stared and stared. They looked and looked. Ha, cried Rabbit. We did it, we did it, we scared him. And he ran away. Ha, 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 laughed Squirrel. We did it, we did it. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> what a cowardly giant he was. He ran off in such a hurry that he left his hat and thumping stick behind. Ha <laughs> ha oh, oh, growled Bear. I'm very sleepy. Let us go back up the hill and finish our naps. And so they did. Where did the giant go? Hmm? Maybe you could talk about that with your nannies and your mommies. What happened? Well, what happened to the snow when it got warmer out? Maybe, maybe you guessed that it was a snowman, right? That they saw that was melting in the hot sun. You know. But well. Roses are red and violets are blue. Sugar is sweet and so are you. Come on, sing with me. Roses are red and violets are blue. Sugar is sweet and so are you. Can you blow a kiss, huh? Roses are red and violets are blue. Sugar is sweet, but it's not good for you. Not too much. No, no, no. Well, I have a poem today. And instead of all the words, do you know what we have? We have little pictures. But that is a you, right? And what is this? I love you. How can we read a poem like that? It's called a rebus poem. There we go. And this is by Jean Marzallo. I love you. <clears throat> Every bird loves a tree. Every flower loves a bee. Every lock loves a key. And I love you. Every sock loves a shoe every
every ghost loves a boo. Everyone loves a two. And I love you. There we are, see, I love you. <laughs> Every shovel loves a pail. Every monkey loves a tail. There they are. Every wave loves a whale. And I love you. Look at the bunnies. Every farmer loves a rake. Every duck loves a lake. Every candle loves a cake. And I love you, right? I love you. I Love You, a Rebus poem by Jean Marzolo. I love you. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I did make a lot of Valentines here. You gonna help me mail them, huh? Are you? You help me. You can sing this song with me, okay? One little, two little, three little Valentines, four little, five little, six little Valentines. Seven little, eight little, nine little Valentines, 10 little Valentines waiting to be mailed. Okay, let's drop them in the mailbox. Here they go. 10 little, nine little, eight little Valentines, seven little, six little, five little Valentines, four little, three little, two little Valentines, one little tailed Valentine left to be mailed. I need to make some more. Come on, help me. Gonna help me make more? Here we go. One little, two little, three little Valentines, four little, five little, six little Valentines, seven little, eight little, nine little Valentines, ten little Valentines waiting to be mailed. Okay, here they go. Ten little, nine little, eight little Valentines, seven little, six little, five little Valentines, <laughs> four little, three little, two little Valentines, one little Valentine left to be mailed. There it is. Number one, number one. <clears throat> well, speaking of five, do you remember this from last week? Hmm? Sure you do. The snow was falling all one day. The children played outside. They made four, four boys. Oh dear, I got this backwards here. <sighs> They made four boys and a girl of snow. One, two, three, four, five. On one, they put a big red bow. That was not very smart. Oh. <clears throat> On one, they put a hat of green. On one, <clears throat> They put a scarf of pink, the prettiest you'd ever seen. On one jolly snowman, they put a hat of blue. <clears throat> on, <clears throat> on one lucky <clears throat> snowman, red mittens, one and two. Whoops, whoops, two. <clears throat> At night, when the parents called them in, the children went inside, thinking about their outdoor friends. One, two, three, four, five. <coughs> Let's do that one again. The snow was falling all one day. The children played outside. 
they made for uh, four boys and a girl of snow. One, two, three, four, five. On one, <clears throat> on one, they put a big red bow. On one, a hat of green. On one, they put a scarf of pink, the prettiest you'd ever seen. On one jolly snowman, they put a hat of blue. On one lucky snowman, red mittens one and two. At night, when the parents called them, the children went inside, thinking about their outdoor friends. One, two, three, four, five. How many fingers? <clears throat> when we go out in the snow, <clears throat> when we go out in the snow, we get so bundled up, especially if it's really cold. Sometimes we can't move as well as we used to, right? Well, this little girl, she she's really bundled up. She must live in a very cold place. Under my hood, I have a hat. She all bundled up, she is. And this is by Carla Cuskin, but it's illustrated by Fumi Kosaka. Carla Cuskin has some wonderful poems and stories. <clears throat> I'm not sure if she's still alive. Under my hood, I have a hat. Oh, look, she's going inside. She's, she's had a lovely time outside in the morning, in the morning snow. Under my hood, I have a hat, <clears throat> and under that, my hair is flat. <laughs> That's what happens. Under my coat, my sweater is blue. My sweater is red. I'm wearing two. Your puppy dog doing. Helping her home. And look what they're having. Oh, a nice little snack. I see some dog bones there, huh? Some nice warm milk. Oh, now we're going outside again. And what is this? Ah, my muffler. <clears throat> Muffles to my chin and round my neck and then tucks in. Go oh, round and round. My gloves were knitted by my aunts. I've mittens too. Little dog, little dog is giving her her mittens. And pants and pants and boots and shoes with socks inside. The boots are rubber, red and wide. Oh, she is really bundled up. And when I walk, I must not fall. Uh oh, because, because, what? Ah, I can't get up at all. Oh, she's so bundled up, she can't bend her knees. Oh, poor little thing. Mommy, I'm sure came. And what did she do? She made a snow angel while she stood there. Under my hood, I have a hat by Carla Cuskin. <clears throat> well, the queen of hearts, she made some tarts all on a winter day. There they are, yum, yum, yum. What are tarts? They're like little pies. Yeah. A knave of hearts. He stole those tarts and with them he ran away. The king of hearts. He called for those tarts and scolded the knave full score. The knave brought back the tarts and vowed to steal no more. 
What does steal mean? That means taking something that doesn't belong to you without permission, right? Now, if he had asked, I'm sure he would have gotten a tart, don't you think? I think he probably would have. The queen of hearts, she made some tarts all on a winter day. The knave of hearts, he stole those carts and with them ran away. The king of hearts, he called for those tarts and scolded the knave full score. The knave of hearts brought back the tarts. Uh, <laughs> and vowed to steal no more. <clears throat> well, what a great day to make something fun in the oven. Cookies, maybe? That, that might be a good idea. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. But if you're sad and you know it, cry big tears. If you're sad and you know it, cry big tears. If you're sad and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're sad and you know it, cry big tears. But if you're silly and you know it, tickle your tummies. <laughs> if you're silly and you know it, tickle your tummies. <laughs> if you're silly and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're silly and you know it, tickle your tummies. <laughs> but if you're shy and you know it, hide your eyes. If you're shy and you know it, hide your eyes. If you're shy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're shy and you know it, hide your eyes. But if you're angry and you know it, make a face. If you're angry and you know it, make a face. If you're angry and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're angry and you know it, make a face. But if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Yay. <clears throat> well, I think it's time for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So let's see if we can get this morning sky out. And there's the night sky, right? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Woo! There we go. <clears throat> Come on, everybody. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Well, I think that's all for us today. It's been awfully nice to see you again. And... Can we all say goodbye now, huh? Bye-bye to the monkey and bye-bye to the queen of hearts and bye-bye to the little girl under the hood. It's time to say goodbye. And bye-bye to Granny Jean and bye-bye to all my friends. Hope to see you next week. And remember, all the programs are there online and you can see any of them anytime. So here we go. Bye-bye. Hmm. <clears throat>